Hi, it's Eric Volo from the University of Michigan. What day is about as gorgeous a day as you can get in October? It's the 15th day, so it's the Ides of October. <laughs> and to Penn State, I hope not. We're hoping for a bit of a miracle here because Penn State, obviously, number one in the conference right now. They're the unbeaten team, and uh, they're coming in here with high hopes. But it's do or die for Michigan today. We're hoping to God that something good can happen. You got Avent splitting out to the left as Michigan comes right to the line of scrimmage from the sideline. Rustin in a slot over there. Hart and Thompson, offset eye, power left in the backfield. Stenovich is in the game. Here's Hart, a heading to throw. He's going to run now in trouble. Lace it back to the 35, and the ball is stolen from him by Alan Jemitis, the cornerback. He's going the other way, untouched. Touchdown, Penn State. Alan Jemitis stole the ball from Chad Henney and scores to give the Nittany Lions the lead, 16 to 10. 35 yards. What a turnaround. What a turnaround in this game. Chad Henney in back, looks for the pass. He sees the blitz coming. He's got positive yardage on the scramble, but he doesn't go down. He lowers his shoulder, runs into a cornerback who steals the ball from him. There's no question that Chad was not down. This ball came out, and Zemitis just stole it from him and went the other way for six. What? Well, you know, you might get a replay on this. But here's, here's my question. Why is Chad Henney trying to pull a Mike Hart and bowl over a cornerback? Go down. The extra point try by Kelly. If they don't review it in a hurry, they won't. And it's a fumbled snap. Kelly's rolling left. He's going to take off and run. He's down to the two, and he dives into the end zone. It's two points. On a broken play, a bad snap, and he winds up, the kicker does, running in for two to make it 18 to 10. You know, what's that old saying? When it rains, it pours. It seems like everything that can go wrong does go wrong at some point in a Michigan game. Manningham will split out to the left. He's been quiet today, doesn't have a catch. Breston on a wing left, Avan to the right. Now Breston coming in motion right. Ball in the center of the field. Hart the only setback. Henny to throw. Blitz coming. Hart picks it up. Henny lays it out. Left sideline. Manningham reaches out. He's got it! Touchdown! What a catch! While he was being interfered with down there by Anwar Phillips, he reached out with both hands and, and made the grab at his fingertips about thigh high for a score. How prophetic when you said Manningham was quiet. Up until now, Manningham has been quiet. And a great throw by Henny. Give him credit when credit's due. Henny put a beautiful throw on that ball. 33 yards, and again, Mike Hart picking up the blitz. And they'll go for two here with 9.32 to play. 18 to 16. Manningham hauling in a 33-yard touchdown pass. Perfect throw for Manningham's fourth TD of this his freshman season. You get a receiver lined up in man coverage like that. Chad Henney read it. It was an out-and-up cut, and Manningham just used his speed to get by the corner. Three receivers wide now for the two-point try. Hart the only setback. Henny shouting something out to the receivers. Five seconds on the play clock. Handoff. Hart up the middle. Cuts left to a big seam, and he's in for two. And Michigan ties it up. It's 18-18. to 18. Frank, 9.32 to play. Very similar to the touchdown that Penn State scored on the two-point conversion for Michigan, except... Michigan spreads Penn State out with a three wide receiver set. They go in motion and they then cut Mike Hart up the middle where Penn State's a little weaker because of the three wide receiver set. And Mike Hart found a seam, cut it back and gets into the end zone. 58 seconds left, Hunt the only setback. They've got no timeouts. Michigan leads by a field goal. Robinson, the throw, quarterback draw. He gets by Burgess and he's in for a touchdown. He made two men miss. Brandon Harrison and Prescott Burgess. And he scores with 53 seconds to go to put Penn State on top. 24 to 21. Michael Robinson with his second touchdown run of the quarter and the game. Well, again, quarterback draw. You spread him out and you let the guy play with his feet. 
And I tell you what, two interference calls on that drive help Penn State immensely, and then Michael Robinson does it with his feet, which you'd expect because that's the kind of guy, that's the kind of quarterback he is. Hey, great drive. 81 yards, 13 plays with no timeouts. Extra point try by Kelly is up, and it is good. And that's a key extra point because now Penn State leads by four with 53 seconds left, and it'll take a touchdown to beat them. When you look at what's left, 53 seconds, Michigan does have the advantage of two timeouts. Now, does Penn State squib kick this, or do they let Steve Breston try to return it, or do you kick it out of bounds? What is your strategy? I think you squib kick it, try to get a bouncer that Michigan can't handle. Well, 53 seconds to go, so it's still a ball game, believe me, and Michigan has two timeouts. You got Breston and Mason back deep. Kelly, the left footer, to kick it off. He's still kicking it, remember, into the wind. He moves forward. He's going to kick it deep. Breston going back. Good kick. Over near the sideline at the 6. Upfield 10, 15, 20. Sideline 25. Breaks a tackle to the 30. Cuts to his right. Trying to get to the near side. 35, 40. And Zemitis, the defensive back, finally catches up and knocks him down at the Michigan 47-yard line. A 39-yard return. And now you've got a short field with 42 seconds and two timeouts. Trailing by 4, 25-21. Michigan starts on its 47. Henny right up under center, hard in the backfield. Breston left, Avant right, Henny to throw, looking right, fires to the sideline, wide open Avant. He's got it. Did he get a foot down inbounds? They say he did at the 36. So that's a first down, a gain of 17. Lloyd Carr is telling his team, get up there, line up quickly, get a play call. We don't want to review with 37 seconds left. But they're not getting a call very quickly. Well, they're going no huddle. He got a toe down, Jim, and then his heel landed out of bounds. They're trying to tell Henny, just snap the ball. And Henny is still not getting it. And now he's calling the plays in the shotgun. The clock still hasn't started because he was out of bounds, obviously, and now they get the snap. Henny fires left side, completes it out there to Tab, and he has spun down at the 32 now, how does he, line. Well, there's inconsistency. He calls him down inbounds, and over here on the Penn State drive, he called a Penn State player out of bounds for the timeout. Well, they just have to call a timeout with 28 seconds left. They're at the 32. They got four on that pass to Carl Tab. A yard shy of the first down with 26 seconds left. It's third and one. Here comes Manningham into the ball game on a third and one. Do you go deep here? Try to get Manningham deep? How about you get a first down? Well, that's the other thing. You're going to think if you're going to go deep, you're thinking you're going to get the fir first down on the fourth down if you don't make this one. Manningham is out to the left against the nickel back, Justin King, the freshman who plays both ways. It's a draw play to Hart. Busting outside left 25 to the 20. King grabs him. He breaks his tackle. He's down to the 15 and is wrestled out of bounds with 18 seconds to play. First down, Michigan. The clock will stop. They trail 25-21. Avan to the left. Manningham out to the right. Breston doesn't know where to line up. Now he lines up on a wing right. There goes Avan in motion to the right. Andy under center gets the snap, drops the throw. Setting up. Got time. Fires to the right flat to Breston. He's got it at the 15. He is shoved back out of bounds. They rule this an incomplete pass. Now, we can't see down there by the bench, so obviously the ball came out. 12 well, seconds to go. Second down at the 16. I think you got to start taking shots in the end zone. Absolutely. Uh, I, I don't think the sideline is where you want to go right now. you got to take start taking shots in the end zone. And Chad probably is going to get that message from the coaching staff. Avant out to the right. He's going up against Alan Zumaitis. Out to the left, you got Manningham. Breston slot right. Henny back to throw. Has some time. Look out, pressure coming. Fires left sideline. Manningham's got it. Stepped out of bounds at the 10. Boy, and Henny just did get rid of that before Matthew Rice drilled him. Clock stop, six seconds left. And the ball is at the 10. Third down, four to go. The key right here is you want to throw quickly into the end zone. Can you get two plays out of it? Yeah, you sure hope so. you got to go in the gun, don't you? Yeah, you got to go in the gun, and I think I, if I were Michigan, I'd be looking at the slant cut somewhere and see if you can get your receiver inside position. Well, they got the receivers bunched in tight, so it's not going to be a slant. There goes Breston to the left. Ball's on the left hash. Henny to throw. Six seconds. Looks. 
fires to Preston, and it's incomplete at the five. No interference. One second left. King was on his back. But no flag, and now it's fourth down. And with one second to play, obviously, game's on the line on this play, and Michigan calls timeout. Uh, Henny comes over to Lloyd Carr, and Jim, he's got a smile on his face. Henny does? this last play of the Henny game. Henny does? Good. I like that, man. That means he's having fun. You know what he's got to do, and everybody's got to say, look, Chad, and every receiver, your heels have to be on the end zone line when you catch the ball, if you catch it. You have got to get in the end zone. This is uh, nothing that you can throw short. Yeah. Well, here we go. Penn State's unbeaten season on the line. Michigan trying to upset them and keep its slim title hopes alive. Three receivers wide. Last play of the game from the 10. Henny barks something out. Breston slot right, Manningham wide. Avant to the left. Henny dropping to throw. Looking right, looking right. Fires toward the end zone. Touchdown! Mario Manningham caught it on the post, and Michigan will win. 27 to 25 on the last play of the game. And the Nittany Lions are stunned. Players have fallen to the ground on all fours. Michigan walks onto the field, surrounding the freshman Mario Manningham, who grabs his second TD catch of the ball game. And Chad Henney brings Michigan from the brink to pull it out with a 53-yard drive in eight plays in the final minute to beat Penn State. Final play at Michigan Stadium. Fourth down, one second left. Michigan trailing by four. Henney fires to the end zone. Touchdown, Manningham! Michigan wins! Touchdown catches. The last one's the winner. What a finish. It's just a slant. It's a quick drop. Five steps. Two receivers on the right side are both slanting. Manningham, the true freshman, catches his second touchdown of the evening. The Big Ten standings have been shaken in the final second in Michigan. Aren't you glad he was smiling? Aren't you glad they put those two seconds back on the clock? Aren't you glad Mario Manningham is at Michigan, whose players are racing down to the student end to celebrate this 27-25 win? Steve is down there with Mario Manningham. Well... Frank, I don't while think Steve can hear us. While we're getting there to go. while you're getting to Steve, I just want to thank you for the to work with you. All right. Here we go, Mario Manningham. <laughs> Take us through that last play. One second left. You're gonna have a great career in Michigan, but what a large moment for you right now. Oh, we just wanted to get the playoff and execute and do what we have to do to come out with the win. So, did you see something in that play? to help call that or was it just one thing that was called and you executed ain't do nothing no different we just execute the play like i said chad just put it right there i thank the line i thank the quarterback oh, all right now go enjoy it i don't know who's out of breath more him or me but i'll tell you what another great moment fellas just like three years ago when these two teams went at it Unbelievable win, Frank, for a Michigan team that desperately needed it. Well, three years ago it was overtime against Penn State the last time they met. And today it went down to the last play. And the freshman Mario Manningham on that post cut in front of Alan Zumaitis. Remember, he was the hero earlier, stealing the ball from Chad Henney and running it for a touchdown. And the Michigan players are down at the student end celebrating. The band is out there with them. Jason Avant just did a Lambo leap. And I'll tell you, this is just pure jubilation. You don't oh think this team needed a win? Oh, my goodness. Darnell, 
Darnell Hood has got the Michigan flag and was starting to head out to the middle of the field. I think he wanted to plant it. Lloyd Cars with Lynn Swan. Coach Carr, unbelievable would describe it. A game hard fought. Character, brilliant play. Well, I think on both sides of the field, Lynn, uh, Penn State is a tremendous football team and uh, great character kids, and so do we. Your kids came back fighting hard. You never gave up. People questioned whether or not they'd have the confidence coming out of that tunnel at the beginning of the ball game. At the end of the ball game, they gave you everything they had. Well, they gave us everything they had for 60 minutes, and uh, this is a special memory. But uh, we got to go uh, win two in a row or try to. <laughs> Coach, Manningham came up with some huge plays. He talked about the freshman at Penn State. He did a fabulous job for you this afternoon. Well, he's, he's having a great year, but I think Chad Henney there hit some big plays. But I give all the credit to our offensive line because we're banged up and battered. And uh, I thought they did a great job protecting Chad. So... Uh, enjoy this one. I know, Coach, you talk to your kids about tradition. You talk to them about character. You talk to them about what Michigan Wolverine football is all about. This has got to be one memory that will last a lifetime. Well, well I think it will. Coach, Thanks, congratulations. Thank great you. win. Thanks. Win number 99 for Lloyd Carr might be one he remembers more than any other for a long, long time. And they ran the table with five straight wins at the end of the year. Well, they've got the first of them here this afternoon by handing Penn State its first defeat of the season by the final 27 to 25. And now for my broadcast partners, Jim Brandstatter and Steve Courtney, it's Frank Beckman saying so long from Michigan Stadium, where our final score was Michigan 27, Penn State 25. From Host Communications, you are listening to the Michigan Sports Network. I don't believe it. <laughs> I absolutely don't believe it. I'm here with my friend Ray Brown. Ray, what you think? I'm telling you, it's probably the most exciting football game I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> I have known this man since I was in the first grade. I can't believe that we, we pulled this thing out, being one second on the clock. I always said to people that at Michigan, they kind of in a cost-cutting move, they, they combine the drama department with the, with the athletic department. You agree? I agree wholeheartedly. And the fans are just phenomenal. Oh, aren't they? Oh, incredible. Well, we've done a lot of Indiana games together, Ray, being from Indianapolis. And uh, I, of course, being a true blue fan. So listen, uh, next week it's on the road to Iowa. And then after that, of course, um, we've got the next home game here. We'll be Indiana, in fact. And if we can just keep this momentum going, it'll be fantastic. So for the University of Michigan and everyone that cares, with the audio, of course, from Host Communications and WJR Radio, and the ABC uh, coverage on the video, I'm Mark Volo for the University of Michigan. Go Blue!